So in the beginning, the web was just text and it was quite boring. Fortunately, it wasn't too long before the ability to embed images inside web pages was added. There are multiple type, mul there are other types of multimedia to consider. It is logical to start with the humble IMG element used to embed a simple image into a web page. In this article, we'll look at how to use it in depth, including the basics, annotating it with captions, using figure, and dealing how it relates to CSS background images. Okay. So how do we put images, an image on a web page? In order to put a simple image on a web page, we use the IMG element. This is an element, this is an empty element, meaning that it has no content or closing tags, and that requires a minimum of one attribute to be useful, SRC, sometimes spoken as its full title, source. The source attribute contains a path pointing to the image you want to embed in the page, which can be relative or absolute in the same way the, as the A element, href attribute values. I see, okay. So, for example, if your image is called dinosaur.jpg and it sits in the same directory as your HTML page, you could embed the image like so. Image src dinosaur.jpg. If the image, oh shit, what happened? If the image was in an images sub uh, subdirectory, which was inside the same directory as the HTML page, which Google recommends for search engine optimization and indexing purposes, then you would embed it like this. Okay, so inside the images, and then, so you have the images, and then dinosaur.jpg, okay. Um, you could embed the image using an absolute URL, for example. So you just put in the URL. But this is pointless as it just makes the browser do more work looking up the IP address from the DNS server all over again. You almost always keep the images for your website on the same server as your HTML. Most images are copyrighted and do not display an image on your web page unless uh, you own the image, you have received explicit blah, blah, blah. You have proof that the image, in fact, is in the public domain. Okay, so don't steal images. Our above code would give us the following results. Hello? Okay. Elements like IMG and video are sometimes referred to as replaced elements. This is because the element content and size are defined by external resources like an image or video file, not by the content of the element itself. Hmm. Did you guys get done the assessment? Yeah. All right. I guess I'll. Uh, the next attribute that. we'll look at is alt. Its value is supposed to be a textual description for the image. For use in situations where the image cannot be seen or displayed, for example, our above code could be modified like so. IMG, SRC, and then the alt is an alternate description of what the image is. Okay. The easiest way to test your alt is to purposely misspell your file name. If, for example, our name, uh, our image name was spelled dinosaur with a bunch of O's, the browser wouldn't display the image and instead the alt text would be displayed. So why would you ever need alt text? It can become in handy for multiple reasons, visually impaired, using screen readers, having alt text available to describe is useful to most of them. As described above, you might have spelled the file or path name wrong. The the browser doesn't support the image type. Some people still use text-only browsers, such as Linux, which alternatively displays the alt text of images. You may want to provide the text. You may want to provide text for image for search engines to utilize. For example, search engines can match alt text with search queries. Users have turned off images to reduce data transfer volumes and distractions. This is especially common on mobile phones and in countries where bandwidth is limited and expensive. 
what exactly should you write inside your alt attribute? It depends on why the image is there in the first place. In other words, what you lose if your image doesn't show up. Decoration, you should use CSS background images for decorative images. But if you must use HTML, add a blank alt. If the image isn't part of the content, a screen reader shouldn't waste time reading it. Oh, I see, okay. If your image provides significant information, provide the same information in a brief alt text. Or even better, in the main text, which everybody can see. Don't write redundant alt text. How annoying would it be for a sighted user if all the paragraphs were written twice in the main content? If the image is described adequately by the main text body, you can just use alt, leave alt as blank. Link. If you put an image inside a tags to turn into an image into a link, if you put an image, okay, you must still provide accessible link text. In such case, you may either write it inside the same A element or use the image's alt attribute, whichever works best in your case. Okay, so if for some reason the image doesn't load, then you can still click the link from the alternate text. Gotcha. You should not put text into images. What? You should not put your text into images. If your main heading needs a drop shadow, for example, use CSS rather than putting your text into an image. However, if you really can't avoid doing this, you should supply the text inside the alt attribute. Hmm, interesting, okay. Essentially, the key is to deliver a usable experience. Even when the images can't be seen, this ensures all users are not missing any of the content. Try turning off images in your browser and see how things look. You'll realize how helpful alt text is if the image cannot be seen. So width and height. You can use the width and height attributes to specify the width and height of your image. You can find your image's width and height in a number of ways. For example, on the Mac, you can use CMD plus I to get information to display up for a file, for image file. Returning to our example, we can do this. This doesn't result in much difference in the display under normal circumstances. But if the image isn't being displayed, for example, the user has just navigated to the page and the image hasn't loaded yet, you'll notice the browser is leaving space for the image to appear in. Hmm. Uh, I see. Okay. Oh, I see, okay. This is a good thing to do, resulting in the page being loaded quicker and more smoothly. However, you shouldn't alter the size of your image using HTML attributes. If you set the image size too big, you'll end up with images that look grainy, fuzzy, or too small, and wasting bandwidth downloading an image that is not fitting the user's needs. The image may also end up looking distorted if you don't maintain the correct aspect ratio. Oh, just Wikipedia aspect. You should use an image editor to put your images in the correct size before putting it onto your web page. If you need to alter an image size, you should use CSS. Okay. As with links, you also need to add title attributes to images to provide further supporting information if needed. This gives us a tooltip on mouse hover, just like link tiles or titles. However, this does not come recommended. Title has a number of accessibility problems, mainly based around the fact that a screen reader 
support is very unpredictable and most browsers won't show it unless you're hovering over with a mouse. No access to keyboard users. If you're interested for more information, it's better to include supporting information in the main article text rather than attached to the image. Yeah. It is now your turn to play. The active learning section will have you up and running with a simple embedding exercise. You are provided with a basic IMG tag. We'd like you to embed the image location at the following URL. Okay. Earlier, we said never to hot link to images on other servers, but this is just for learning purposes, so we'll let it go. We would like you to also add some alt text and check that it works by misspelling the image URL. Set the image content, correct width and height. And then set a title. So image SRC equal quotations. It's going to be this. Close the quotations. Nice. And then what we're gonna have is we're gonna have some alt equal quotations. Um, so an alt is supposed to describe the image, right? So oh. A I was put that in store. A dinosaur. No, I guess it's oh shit, I said dino. A dinosaur. Uh Bones, dinosaurs, bones on display at the museum. End of quotations. Nice. What was the height of width? Height equals quotations one seventy one six two hundred. Did I do that wrong? Oh, there's no PX. H W. Hmm. 
Oh shit, what happened? Alright. <clears throat> so that will go. So annotating images with figures and figure captions. Speaking of captions, there are a number of ways that you could add a caption to go with your image. For example, there would be nothing stopping you from doing this. And what happens if we do this? Okay. This is okay. It contains the content you need. It is nicely styleable using CSS. But there is a problem here. There is nothing that semantically links the image to its captions, which can cause problems for screen readers. For example, when you have 50 images and captions, which caption goes with what image? Oh, I see. A better solution is to use the HTML5 figure and figure caption. Mm, I see. Okay, so you're just wrapping it in a figure, and then inside the figure, you have a figure caption. These are created for exactly this purpose, to provide a semantic container for figures and clearly link the figure to the caption. Our above example can be written like this. Okay, now what does this give me? It won't change anything, but uh, if you have multiple images, then it will neatly separate every caption with every image. Figure caption. So it goes right next to it is the difference. The figure caption element tells browsers and assistive technology that the caption describes the other content of the figure elements. Note from an accessibility viewpoint, captions and alt have distinct roles. Captions benefit even people who can see the image, whereas alt text provides the same functionality as an absent image. 
Therefore, captions and alt text shouldn't just say the same thing because they'll both appear when the images are gone. Try turning images off in your browser to see how it looks. A figure doesn't have to be an image. It is an independent unit of content that expresses your meaning in a compact, easy to grasp way. To go in several places in the page's linear flow provides essential information supporting the main text. A figure could be several images, a code, snippets, audio, video, equations, a table, or anything else. Active learning, creating a figure. In this active learning section, we'd like to take the finished code from the previous active learning section and turn it into a figure. Wrap it into a figure element, copy out the title attribute, remove the title attribute, and put in the text inside the figure caption. Well, I mean, that's exactly what we just did. Oh, I didn't have a title here. Okay, I'm not going to do that again. CSS background images. You can also use CSS to embed images into web pages and JavaScript, but that's another story entirely. The CSS background image property and other background star properties are used to control background image placement. For example, to place an image, to place a background image on every paragraph on a page, you could do this. The resulting embedded image is arguably easier to position and control than HTML images. So why bother with HTML images? As hinted to above, the CSS background images are for decoration only. If you just want to add something pretty to your web page to enhance the visuals, this is fine. Although such images have no semantic meanings at all. They can't have any text equivalents. They are invisible to screen readers. Okay. Summing up, if an image has meaning in terms of your content, you should use an HTML image. If the image is purely decoration, you should use CSS background images. That's all for now. Okay, seems pretty straightforward.